Uh, Maryland, like you guys, he knows this large influx of fatal and non-fatal overdoses. And first responders and law enforcement personnel were going into scenes of dead women and kids, the late teens, early adults. Uh, and they were seeing all these signs and indicators of drug use. And then they were, oh, okay. they were speaking to the parents, and the parents you know, had no clue. And I don't say that disparaging the parents. I, I tell people it's not their world. A lot of these signs you wouldn't know unless you had some kind of poor uh, education or basis in the field. So we decided how do we get that information into the hands of the parents who needed the caretakers, the loved ones, because the law enforcement and the emergency medical personnel, they already have it. So we started a pilot program with the local sheriff's office and the trailer right there for this. And uh, they started touring around the county, it was very well received, so we decided to make another one and take it nationally. And what we have inside is all kinds of indicators of drug use. Uh, planted all around for be a typical teenager's bedroom. And it was put together with in kind of three avenues. We took parents through who had lost kids to addiction. And kind of said, what do you know now that you didn't know then? Uh, what are some of the things you would pass on uh, that you saw, had questions about, uh, but didn't know then? And we took the more users through, kind of asked them what hiding spaces, care for an area they used to jazz, kind of what their patterns were. And then we took also that input from the EMS and law enforcement personnel. And we took all the common threads, the most common ones we had from all three, and kind of used them in the bedroom to point out to parents. It's like a 10 to 15 minute free tour. Uh, I hope when you're done, you have like a basis of knowledge where you can speak to a child from a position of strength and you saw one of these indicators in the room. Because even some of the parents told us there were things they saw and got explanations they weren't comfortable with, but they didn't press further. But they didn't have a basis to really know what it was. It could have been a candy wrapper or something that was okay. Maybe that's just a problem. So that's kind of the basis of the tour. We kind of started in a closet in the bathroom. Like as soon as he moves a little bit this way, I'll walk you guys in. And if you have any questions, I, I invite questions, whatever. Any questions about anything you see. I have to do a little repeat for the others, I apologize. My name is Bill Dollar, I'm with the Philadelphia Association. I was a 30-year member of the Washington D.C. Police Department. I spent about 28 and a half in the force. I retired with the Code 3 Association. We do a lot of community outreach with policemen, trying to bring them together, trying to repair a relationship in D.C. A lot of outreach. Um, as I explained earlier, the mayor, we had uh, the same match with the lights and overdoses, both the people and the people that you're having here in the entry. And we started a pilot program. We had a trailer just like you see here, identical to this, that we made as a mock teenager's bedroom. This is. And we noticed that when the law enforcement and EMS personnel were going to the signs of overdoses in kids' bedrooms, they were seeing a number of indicators around the room that parents didn't see and really had no time. It's not to speak disparagingly about the parents. It's just not, I explain that it's not their world. No. So we want to get the information to parents and love with the caretakers. So we made this mock teenager bedroom, planted signs of use all around the bedroom. Uh, and then we brought parents who their lost kids to addiction and kind of said, what, what do you know now that you didn't know that? And what are some things we got to We also work for uh, addicts through here. And I said, what were your patterns? What did you use for jazz? What did you store in packaging? As well as the emails and uh, police personnel. The things they were seeing that parents didn't know. So those three common threads we took kind of made this tour. And I started five, if I can just find it. Well, if I just step there, no, that's okay. I don't want to put my head down. Can you start here real quick? Can I just ask you, did you notice anything about the shoes? Yeah, exactly. Shoelaces are commonly used as metal of size or laying in bedrooms, mounting cars. They're commonly used as tourniquets when you're injecting the heroin. Cut off the circulation here between a tight different pieces of vein, you need that to inject. Um, shoes are also a really great hiding spot. And I think parents, this, this tour is based on uh, opiate abuse, what we're seeing now with heroin, fentanyl, but marijuana, uh, ecstasy pills, molly, okay, everything I'm showing you as far as hiding spaces are very commonly used. They could be in, they're very commonly hiding spaces. But you got to push in the shoes, get deep in the tongue, a lot of people can reach here, get deep in the tongue, it's a place where a lot of things are hidden. And that's, that's representative of about a gram of heroin. So it's on the street for about $120, $150. It's, uh, it's tied to the knot at the top. Pay attention to that knot. It becomes really important as you move through the bedroom. Uh, as I said, it's about $120, $140 when people last. How many doses will that last the user? It depends on their tolerance. It depends on how long they've been using. If it's a newer user, it might last two to three days. Uh, someone who has a long-term habit, maybe a day. And what happens is that you use heroin, your body starts to build a tolerance, so you need to keep using more to get that same desire. Sure,
pockets are also another great one for any type of grocery store. Shirt pockets and pants pockets in the closet. Then come here and strap up your eyes first. Make sure you get these things in bio and hard reach into a pocket. About this. Uh, the reason this should be in your late bones, early bones, bedroom, unless you have a diabetic in the house. Uh, needles are commonly shared, so I suggest you to search with your eyes first. Uh, you know your child's medical history, you don't know the person that they've been sharing with, so always make sure you're feeling around for what you don't want to get stuck. And a lot of times they don't have this protective gap. To the bathroom, you know, sneaking is going to work out the way you want to get it. This is a, as a law enforcement officer, this is one of the best friends you have. You can always tell what's going on in the house or bedroom by the trash. Yeah, this one seems kind of stupid, obvious, but it's a pack of insulin syringes. You should find this in the bedroom. You can buy these at CVS. You don't need a prescription in different brand. Birth is a good one. Here, you can also be smoked, simply placing it on the top here and flame underneath. What they'll do is they'll use the foil like this, roll it into like a cigarette shape to ingest the vapors. Also, pens are very nominal. Most parents are finding pens that were hollowed out. The actual pen was gone, but the empty case is used to inhale and suck in the vapors. What do you that is? Use a mouse and everything else to work on it. But why would you have a mouse? Not then. Not then. When the camera is jacked, it has to be placed on some metal device. So it's very common to make sure the water and heat it, dissolve it. And then it's a mint from the 60s, but they'll take that piece of cotton and put it in the liquid. And then they'll take that needle of the syringe and put it directly into the cotton to draw it up. And all it really does is draw in the cotton fibers that you're injecting in your bud. The problem, too, is that the cotton that they use, they don't reuse a number of times. So as it sits in the bedroom, it can't and it's moist and begins to uh, build a bacteria. So then you're drawing up that bacteria and injecting it. You can go see the Cigarettes are the same thing. We find these cigarettes with the filters gone. The cigarette filters are not used just to have cotton swallows. You shouldn't find cigarettes that are not smoked. The cotton cut off well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a cap from the plunger end of the syringe. Uh, the needle end has that orange cap that's in shape of the needle. Kids are very quick to discard that and flush it down the toilet because people know what it is. People commonly don't know what these are. It's maybe going out of a lot of Sometimes nurses don't know what these are. But it's the plunger end. And sometimes if, in desperate situations, they don't have a heating device, they'll place the heroin and water in there and they'll get a cold, cold shake and they can do this and, and throw it out from right there. But it's, the, it's another thing parents that they found in trash cans and labeled bedroom floors that had no clue what they were. These are empty gelatin caps. You can get these at GNC. They're not illegal, but it's another way heroin is commonly being packaged. A lot of weightlifters, uh, fitness fanatics, use them for protein powders, which you can get at GNC. I would tell a parent if you find these in your trash can, ask your kids for the supplement that they're putting in. It's really not a big deal. But it doesn't make sense to package the protein supplement in and empty it out. These are to be swallowed and ingested. Uh, again, it's another very common way of coming from property that heroin is packaged. Tell you is what I tell parents is uh, the signs of opioid abuse. 
Uh, if your kid is beginning isolated and changing his social circles, pitching is a common side effect of opioid use, uh, lack of appetite, uh, nausea. Uh, one of the one of the big ones is the lack of, you'll see the hygiene start to change. Uh, friends and social circles will change. And the, the best explanation or the truth I give you is stupor is a Greek word for uh, narcotic is a Greek word for stupor. And they call it the nod in the social community. Literally, you can see guys standing in the corner that they just kind of have the face down like this. The whole face looks lazy, but they literally look like they're in stupor. Those are very, very common signs. Um, the soda can, the last thing here, don't last long in a teenager's bedroom. These are sold on Amazon as personal safes and they're traded around between the kids. Uh, and it's a simple twist of the cap up here. Again, great hiding spot. This isn't the world's uh, smallest drink or small. This is another great indicator. There's no reason for your kid to have these. And what happens is parents said they found these around the room. As you begin to snort this powder, moisture gets in this tube so the product begins to stick to the inside. You're losing products. You're going to discard this in the trash on the floor and cut another piece. And I do these kind of represented to show you uh, heroin can be anywhere white, tan to brown. Uh, we're seeing fentanyl coming in gray. So sometimes you see like the gray specks inside the white. It's a pretty good indicator for law enforcement to discover fentanyl. Most of the drugs in your area here, what is being sold on the street is heroin, contains uh, uh, some type of fentanyl. Some of the heroin, including our areas and areas that are sold on the street as heroin, contain no heroin whatsoever. It's straight fentanyl. And then I give you a quick explanation of heroin, street heroin is about 5, 7, 10% purity for users. Uh, when heroin reaches the blood brain barrier, it turns to morphine. So if you figure fentanyl, which most of this heroin on the street is covered now, is 50 to 100 times stronger in morphine. A user that's used to that 5, 7, 10% now injecting something that's 50 to 100 times stronger is why we're using and losing all these young kids. It's not heroin, it's not prescription pills. Fentanyl is responsible for this huge spike we're seeing in fatal overdoses. So if we move towards the bedroom, I don't mean to keep pushing everybody around. If you look here on the floor and kind of up on the bed, this is the number one thing parents told us that they wish they were revenue. This is the, in the shoe that cut that high piece of plastic bag and that little yellow zip rock in that, that's a job. They'll either tear them off with their hands or they'll put them in their mouth and tear it off. And you can see them all over the bed and floor. Parents said they found those. Oh, sorry about that. No, that's okay. Parents said they found those on the beds, bedroom floors. Moms even said they used to buy them all the time in the vacuum canister. But had no clue what they were. I can tell you right now that that little zip I showed you, these tied pieces of plastic. If you find them in your house, it does not mean it's heroin use, but you have drug use in your house. There's no other justification for it whatsoever. Belts commonly used as tourniquets. You don't take your belt off and find it in that position. We get a lot of times the place from the arm, they'll have to put it in the, this end of the teeth to keep pressure. Not this material, but on a leather belt, you find teeth marks actually in the belt. Shoe strings, ties can be used. Uh, what I tell parents is if you suspect your kid comes in high the night before, these are the clothes they had on, I don't have anything in them. Get to the clothes they had on the night before. A lot of times they're not as cautious when they come in and they're high. They're, their guard is down, they're down. So it's a great time before they get up in the morning, get to the clothes they had on. This is called a works kit. It's not one of those uh, sold on Amazon as a personal safe. And what it is, it basically contains everything that I need to ingest. And what I would tell you is the spoon, as I showed you for cooking, people ask why it's bent. If you put a regular spoon down, it kind of leads to that position. If I eat hair on a bend like that, it's perfectly level, so I don't have to worry about losing any product. Another thing, these spoons get that black marks on the bottom. You'll find them on the bed, you can find them on light switches and door handles, because as these, as we take this in and out of here, as a kid would, that black marks and those charcoal marks start to get on the materials like that, they're burn marks. What happens is, when I explained earlier that, um, my time, as you begin using hair, you can't stop, it's a physiological addiction. So your body's gonna start telling you you're about to get sick when you don't use it. Uh, they, they, they describe this as food times 10. Uh, violent stomach cramps kind of put you in a fetal position, nausea, sweating, chills. As that starts to come on, it's what in that community they call being dosing. So they get desperate in there. You'll see kids a lot of times anxious on the phone, panicking, very anxious, trying to get a hold of somebody. That word kid comes in very handy. And I know the uh, internet newspapers here are very common in our area. If your child leaves because they're beginning to get sick, they're not coming back home to use. That's why they have these works kit. It contains everything they need once they obtain the heroin. 
to go to a Home Depot, Walmart parking lot, and the place they feel quite secure to eject. And that's where you see a lot of the, uh, the fentanyl use. You can see the picture of the, the kids in the car, they still have the needle in the arm, or they still have it in the hand. They get seven to ten seconds, they never even have a chance to put things away. This, and I would tell you, zipper pouches, small purses that are about that size, are very common items. They call them work sticks. And your child will travel with that. They might get their book bag, their keys, forget everything else. They're always going to have that with them. A lot of times I would say check in cars, collect in cars, I didn't suspect at all. Purses, small makeup kits, anything that's zipper compartment, uh, like a shave your makeup kit, very, very common for storing those items. And then we kind of end around here. Uh, I tell parents everything is not always hidden and secure. Lift things up is that. This is a, PlayStations and Xbox controllers were one of the number one places the kids said that they stored because they have battery backups. Like, this clock has a cord, we travel a lot, so we cut it off, but it doesn't need batteries to operate. So it's basically a free voice space that you have in here. PlayStation and Xbox controllers have that also. They don't need the batteries to operate, so it's a, it's a great voice space to use. This is another one of the Amazon safes. It's one of the better ones, I think. It's got a simple twist that has water both ends. But again, the straw, clear use, and the same type of packaging. It's not a beverage or snack you can think of that they don't make a container for. And then, I'm sorry, I'll end right here, ladies. This is another type of packaging that you shouldn't be seeing around your house. These are, they call these paper folds. Um, a lot of times, kids, uh, some kids, will, they're not dealers, but they'll obtain couple grams of heroin to share with friends and they'll all put it money together. So if they're in a car, they don't have the, the small packaging like you see that actually have to go through the time of twisting. Paper folds is what they use. That's notebook paper, wax paper, tin foil, and that's a piece of a magazine. If you're finding these pieces around small pieces of paper folded like this, the receipts are very common because it's exchanged in a car. Absolutely, unless you find a love note or a phone number, there's absolutely no reason for the phone to put pieces of paper to be the small you find it around your house. What's common now also is uh, the butane torches, they're very small, you can get them at Walmart. Holding a cigarette lighter under that spoon takes a while to heat and dissolve. A lot of times kids will have those torches and find them laying around the bedroom. Even if they're a smoker, absolutely no reason to have a torch. You don't have to light it. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Here's kind of important, I welcome you guys to take a picture. Uh, it has the other heating devices in it. Besides the spoon, you can use a bottle of a Coke can, you can use a bottle cap. But I tell parents, that's that's one of the most important things you should take from this tour. And the most important thing the parents said that they missed, and, and of course this is about opiates, heroin, fentanyl, that's that's the number one thing they missed. But if you see that in your house, I'm telling you there's a clear sign of drug use. And as far as prescription pills, I would tell parents, if your child has a surgery, then a lot of times these addictions start as legitimate injuries, sports injuries, car accidents. Yes, and, and what happens is a lot of parents in hindsight, when they look back, the kid was issued oxycontin or words, and they gave the bottle to the kid to sell pills, and they didn't follow the instructions, got to eat like candy. I would tell you, if your kid has prescribed those with an injury, you dose it. And when the pain is powerful with ibuprofen, get it out of the house. You don't need it. I mean, none of these kids want to be at this. Any questions that I can answer for you? Or, I mean, I hope that was helpful. It's like, uh, and again, a number of the things I showed you are kind of great Spider-Man sense of that one. The, like, the strong syringes, the, the tactics and stuff, those are things that have absolutely no other justification whatsoever. And I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. And I appreciate you. So, thank you very much. Search like online for indicators of drug use. There are some pictures and videos, and you'll see you'll see things very similar to what you're seeing here. Uh, and again, as the drug change, like marijuana, you might find a rolling paper or some kind of smoking devices, so that will change. Um, our focus here is kind of opioid abuse, but again, I think besides the physical signs or the, the paraphernalia, the packaging, the, the demeanor is going to change. Uh, and, and, and I try and I, I love the example of. Uh, the student. 
I think it's a perfect description. Even on YouTube, if you go on there and put like the knot or someone on heroin, they're literally standing and they won't fall over, but they're sitting. And, and, and the whole face is becoming a face. It's weird. The pupils are very constricted. And the other thing is, there's a withdrawal. You know, it's, it's not a, it's not a craving like cocaine or marijuana. Yeah, and, and and I can tell you, even like in arrest situations in my law enforcement career, if you arrest someone who's using heroin. They get arrested at 3 in the afternoon, they literally want to panic because they know they're going to be in all night and I'm not going to get the news. So they literally want to panic. You can see it going on. The skin gets clammy and sweating and chills and then you see the like in the cell block in a beautiful position because they've got nausea and that stomach pain. So they're, they're, those are very clear indicators of opioid processes. And again, thank you. Okay. If you want to tell you, this is, this is, this is what uh, will help you understand. Like a 30 milligram oxycodone pill, there's 30 milligrams of oxycodone. When you move to this car, heroin and fentanyl, you lose all pharmaceutical controls. And I can tell you, two weeks ago, I talked with the friends I used to with DEA, and this is how it's done. So, drug dealers, they don't have the chemicals. Now, cannabis even bonds together, right? Absolutely. Even if you have 30 and 30, but, but they have no idea, like when, you, when they buy even kilos of fentanyl heroin, you don't know the percentage. You know how they tell them? They'll take a few and test with them. So if I'm a dealer, I leave D.C. and go down to Charlottesville, and I bring the test with me. We'll be in a hotel room where they meet, and we'll take a portion of it, cut it up, and then have them inject. And the hope from that dealer is they're going to start scratching their arms and then fall unconscious, and then it, that's what I want. So you're, you're relying on that guy to come back and sit at the table and mix Heroin, fentanyl, with stuff we get at GNC, Nocitol, Xanatol, Quinine, uh, Creatine, mix them together, and you need to hope that, or he needs to hope, it's not strong enough to kill people, but that it's not weak enough for people to complain, because if it's weak, they don't come back. But literally, human testers, you have no pharmaceutical control whatsoever. It's, it's ridiculous. But, and I would say this, and I'll let you go. Uh, the, Doctors are much more hesitant to prescribe opioids now, and they, they contain those abuse deterrent formulas. So everyone who used to snort them, if you try and crush them like you snort them, they're like a gummy bear. You can't do it. And then if you want to shoot them, you can mix them with water and heat it. It's a jello, so you can't get in a syringe. So what, well, the unintended consequences are we push the whole generation there because they can't, they can't abuse the pills like they used to. So it helped, but the unintended consequences, we push the whole kids towards this power. I see our problem is very We're both in the top 10 here in D.C. We're right there with you guys in West Virginia, Tennessee. And, and, I, and I wish I had more to pass on. And I've talked to the sponsors here about getting the literature that we can hand out. But, but I guess the best I can do for my person now is to get a picture. And I tell parents, you might see something in here and be like, I mean, that looks similar to this. At least it starts a conversation, maybe call a medical professional. Um, that's, that's kind of the advice that I give. I hope that was helpful. Absolutely. It's nice to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. I'm standing here. I'm like, why is everybody lining up? <laughs>